welcome back to my channel Lara Bakes and today I am going to be making some millionaire shortbread which is one of my favourite yummy treats um, it feels like an indulgent one but I love it and especially during this quarantine you just want some comfort so why not follow along and try making it it's quite simple so essentially if you don't know what millionaire shortbread is you've got at the bottom a layer of shortbread then on top you've got some caramel and then on top some melted chocolate Sweet upon sweet upon sweet, but it's delicious, it works, and I'm sure you'll all like it. So I'm going to show you all the different steps, starting with how to make the shortbread, which we're going to bake first. Then you make the caramel, put it on top, and then melt the chocolate. Um, and I will list in the description box all the ingredients that you're going to need, but I'm going to show you those now. So for the shortbread, in here I've got 250 grams of plain flour with 75 grams of granulated sugar. And then you're going to need a 175 grams of unsalted butter and then you're going to need a large egg then for the caramel in here i've got 80 grams of granulated sugar and then you're going to need um 634 grams of condensed milk so normally you'd get the carnations one sainsbury's didn't have it so this is just another brand so it's essentially um two cans of those and then you've got 80 grams of butter with that and then finally for the chocolate you're going to want 400 grams i've just got milk chocolate you can use dark chocolate if you prefer, it's whatever you prefer, um, and 80 grams of butter. So where I bake um, the millionaire shortbread is just like a little square tin which I have lined with some freeze-proof paper, which I find it a lot easier to then take out at the end, um, lift it out and then you cut it. It's a lot easier than just greasing the tin, I find, but do whatever works for you. Um, so then we're just gonna, yeah, first of all, make the shortbread and essentially what you're gonna do is, here I've got the flour and sugar, just gonna give that a little mix together. And then you're going to crumble in the butter so you're going to rub it between your fingers and the flour it's the rubbing in method and you rub it until it looks like fine breadcrumbs and you want to use the tips of your fingers that's the coolest part of your hand and you want the butter to be cold just as you're doing you don't want it to be too soft um which of course i'm going to show you um how how you do it and then once that's come together you're going to bind it with the egg and then knead it together into a little ball and then you're going to roll it out into the shortbread to put in there um, I think my tin's quite small for this. I think I'm going to have quite a bit extra, but I'm going to see how it goes. You could always use a bigger tin, which would probably be better. I'm just using this small tin for now. So I'll show you how to rub in the butter with the flour and sugar. Okay, so I'm just going to add in all of the butter into the flour and the sugar. And then what I'm going to do is, like I said, just going to start to rub the butter into it all until it's like breadcrumbs. This is actually really similar to how you make... Um, like short cross pastry it's rubbing in butter into the flour i have to say this is probably like one of my least favorite things to do in baking um rubbing this in but you just got to be patient with it and what i should have said earlier is that my oven is preheating currently it's on um, gas mark four which is about 350 degrees Fahrenheit and 180 degrees Celsius. Okay, so all the butter is now rubbed in. It's now time to add the egg. You just want to use your hands and just start to knead this into it so that it comes into like a, a dough ball. bread last week it's definitely one of those that gets your hands messy you can see that it's starting to get into like a nice ball now so what you actually would normally do at this point is you would roll the dough because it is quite wet you would roll it between two pieces of parchment paper and then put it into your tin but because i've got a small tin what i'm going to do is actually just put the dough straight in and use my fingers to fill it out to the edges Probably not the way you should be doing it, but I think this is going to work. I've done it before that way, so I'm going to risk it, but I'm going to do it that way. Here's my dough, and I'm literally just going to, I've already done it into kind of like a square, and I'm just going to push it in to fill all the corners. And I think where my tin is quite small, it's easier to do that. The only thing it's not going to be nice and even as when you would roll it with a rolling pin, so you can get a proper even thickness. I'm doing more the rough and ready, the more home style baking. Um, 
but if you do prefer things to look perfectly even then I would say roll it between the parchment paper but I'm just doing the lazy way and I'm going to try and keep it as even as possible you can see where a bit of bits thicker then you're just going to even those bits out so once you're happy with that you're going to want to prick I want to make sure actually that the even all the corners okay so once you're happy you want to prick it all over with a fork it's just that it will bake nice and even and it won't rise too much you want to prick it all over okay and then you want to bake that for 20 minutes in your oven So like I said, that's not the proper way or the professional way to do that. But I'm not so bothered about my baking being so even. I'm not on Bake Off. Um, there's no one here judging me. It's just me and my family going to have it and enjoy it, give some to the neighbours. Um, so I'm not so bothered that it isn't going to be perfectly even in um, length all the way through. Um, but if you want to do that, if you, if you are... Normally I'm a perfectionist, so that's the funny thing. But sometimes when it comes to baking, I can be a bit lazy. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no judgment here. Um, so do whichever way you would prefer. So leave that baking in the oven for 20 minutes. Like I said, on gas mark for 350 degrees Fahrenheit, around 180 degrees Celsius. And then when that's ready, we can then go on to making the caramel. Okay, so I've just taken the shortbread out of the oven. So that for 20 minutes until it turns like a nice light golden brown. Let me show you that there. Um, and let this cool while we do the caramel stage. So to do the caramel, if anyone watched my salted caramel video, I mentioned about making a dry caramel. So what you're going to do is with your sugar in the pan, there's no water added to this. So what you're going to do is just let it melt on its own. You're going to put it on a medium to high heat. You don't want it too high because if it's too high, it's going to burn too quickly and it's going to catch and the caramel is going to burn. So just put it to medium to high and then you're just going to let it um, melt. You don't want to stir it with anything. You can literally swirl the pan around, um, but you want like a light golden colour. We don't want this too dark. Because once you've got that light golden colour, we're then going to add the butter and all the condensed milk. I'm just going to keep on whisking that until it reaches 112 degrees. So I did have a digital thermometer where you just point it, it's like a laser one, and it tells you. And I've lost that, so I'm just going to be using this. I'll put this in the pan, and then when it gets to 112 on here, I know it's ready. So I'm just going to leave that, the gas is on, and I'm going to let that uh, melt on its own until it's nice and light and golden. So I can actually see that underneath, and especially in the corners there, um, it's starting to melt and caramelise now. It does happen quite quickly, so all of a sudden I can see the middle, um, it's all melting and it's a light caramel colour. So like I said, you can sort of shake the pan around to make sure that you get it all, but you don't really want to stir it with anything at this stage. Okay, so that bit is now melted, and... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off the heat while I add the other bits. Put it to the side. So it's going to start to sizzle. So I don't want to do it while it's on the heat. I'm just giving that little stir while I'm Wait for that all to add in. Put that back on the heat. So I'm going to add in my thermometer now. Keep an eye on the temperature. So like I said, you want it at 112 degrees Celsius. By the time this gets there, it'll be ready to pour on top of the shortbread that's cooling um, on the side. So what I did is I let the caramel get to 112 degrees and I just poured it into um, my tin, which I'm now going to put into the fridge to cool down while we get the chocolate ready. So while that's cooling in the fridge, um, it'll be ready once the chocolate's ready, we can pour it straight on, it'll be quicker. So like with the brownies, um, we melted the chocolate and butter on a bain marie. And if you didn't watch the brownie video, it, it's basically I've got a pan with some water in the bottom simmering and then I've put a glass bowl on top with the chocolate and butter in. You don't want the bottom of the bowl to touch the water at all. 
So we're just gonna do that and let it melt. It's gonna take its time, we're in no rush. And then by the time it has melted, as we've put the um, shortbread in the fridge, it'll be ready to pour straight on top because you don't wanna pour warm chocolate onto warm caramel. It's just, it's not gonna work. You want the caramel to be cool to the top. So I've got my milk chocolate on here with the butter. You can choose dark chocolate if you prefer. I prefer milk. Um, and I've cut the butter up just so it will help melt quicker. Um, and we're just gonna let that do its thing. So that's all melting nicely. Another couple of minutes. Just wait for the last bits of chocolate and butter to melt together. So I've just poured the chocolate on top and I'm just going to spread that out. Make sure you cover the caramel and go into all the corners. Again, trying to be as even as possible. Making sure it's not too much in one place. And then when you're happy with that, it's ready to go back in the fridge again. Just put it in the fridge, it's just gonna make it set that much quicker. And if you're impatient like me and you just wanna try it, then that's a good way to do it. There we go, we're gonna put that in the fridge. So I think we're gonna leave that for about 20 minutes in the fridge, and then I'm gonna have a look to see if it's set, and if it has, I'm just gonna take it out, cut it into squares, and then try it. Okay, so I definitely took them out quicker than I should have done, but I also I chilled them in the freezer, um, so that would speed up the chilling process. So let me take one to show you. So there we have it. You can see that quite a thick shortbread, that's from where I didn't roll it, but that's fine. Um, you've got your layer of caramel and then your layer of chocolate. Um, so here goes for the taste test. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is so good. So good. Definitely needs longer chilling because it's so soft, the chocolate and caramel. I just wanted to film the taste test, so got very impatient. I'm going to go put those back into the fridge now. Um, but yeah, I hope you have fun making this. And um, you can see those lovely three layers. Happy baking! Mm. So good.